My husband wanted a divorce right after I gave birth. All started late December when my husband started getting really distant with me. We were getting ready to have our baby boy, and everything was great between us throughout the entire pregnancy. He went to every appointment and helped with every detail with the nursery and baby shower. He was so involved. But then he slipped. He wasn't sleeping or eating. He fell into this weird depression, and I think he was panicking. Christmas Eve, he was up all night acting really uptight and moody with me, so I went to bed. He came downstairs at 3 a.m., and he's sitting alone in the dark. I asked if everything was alright, and he snapped at me. He started screaming at me, saying he didn't want to be with me anymore, and just kept going for an hour. I never saw that side of him before, and I was devastated. We went to the hospital together, and I had to ask him to wear his wedding ring. He just acted differently. He wasn't supporting me through the labor. He kept complaining about the whole thing. Once the baby was here, he was better. But she insisted we get divorced, I didn't want any of that. He kept snapping on me again once we were home, then he moved out into his parents' house. Never came around to help me. I was left alone with a newborn. I then filed for divorce. While forming a plan with my lawyer, he sent me a dissolution offer via text message. That was devastating. We were not in contact for weeks. He blocked me on everything and cut me off financially. I was losing it all. I still had my ooze, but he tried to stop paying the bills. He told me he wasn't paying anymore. We agreed that I would be a stay-at-home mom, so I don't have a job, and I'm almost done with my nursing degree. He left me with nothing. Now, a month later, he's buying me flowers. I started allowing visits with him and the baby. He was acting all sweet towards me and super sad in the eyes. It was almost like he was going to ask me something. He texted me today pictures from his visit last night, and we had a small talk. That was the most we have done contact-wise in a month. It really stinks because I really don't want a divorce, but I tried all of the avenues to fix it all. Even if I tried to offer him the option, I don't even know what he would say, and I can't handle rejection. I think it's truly over now, and it's really hard to accept. Now that he is around again to see the baby, it is hard on both of us. I hope it gets easier. He has since made it right with the bills and money. But still, so screwed up, entitled dad steals money from my bank account. So, this was back before my parents got divorced. I'm an adult now, but when I was a kid, my mom opened up bank accounts for my brothers and me to use so that we could learn to save money. My mom had us all go to the bank to deposit the $20 we had gotten from something. Then, a couple of weeks later, my brothers and I wanted to buy something, so we went to withdraw each of our $20. Keep in mind that when I was a kid, $20 could buy you some amazing toys. Me, I'm here to withdraw my $20. Tell her, I'm sorry, but your $20 is not here. Maybe you spend it? Me, no, I didn't spend it, getting really sad and crying at this point. My dad proceeds to pull me away, turns to me, and explains that if you don't deposit $20 every month, then the bank takes your money. I grew up never trusting banks and hiding my money so that the bank wouldn't steal it. I found out as an adult that my entitled dad would steal me and my brother's money to fund his fishing trips. My, male, 28, engagement with my partner, female, 27, is ruined because of a ring. Summary. I proposed to my girlfriend with a ring, but later found out it was fake. Her parents accused us of doing it intentionally. My parents are upset and don't want us to continue. My partner and I have been together for three years. We have both loved each other since the very beginning. She has brought up the topic of marriage for a while, and so I decided to propose to her last month in Korea, where she grew up. I custom made the gold ring with a ruby and three diamonds on each side, but asked my parents to make it at their regular jewelry shop, which they've been going to for a while out of town. I also organized a professional photographer, then asked her to marry me in a traditional Korean village. She said yes, and everything went very smoothly, except that the ring was too big. 
She stayed a bit longer in Korea while I returned home for work. She went with her mom to a jewelry shop the following week and asked for the ring to be made smaller. The issue started when the shop attendant said the whole ring was fake, the gold, the ruby, and the diamonds. I paid $1,500 for the ring, not a crazy amount, but I thought it was a pretty ring. She went to four different shops, and everyone said pretty much the same thing. One shop valued the ring at only $1.30.40. My partner and her mom were understanding at first, saying that we would not have known. When she came back from Korea, she told me that her parents were very upset about the ring and that my parents, because they made the ring, only valued her $30. They refused to meet my parents, which was initially planned for the end of the year. Her mom said to her that it would be better if I admitted about the fake ring, with a view to buying a proper one in the future. These implied that we gave her a fake ring on purpose. My parents were very upset and told me that they wouldn't bless our marriage. Question, is the ring really the problem here? I'm not sure how to move forward now. I never knew a ring could potentially break our three-year-long relationship. Edit, none of us knew it was fake. A few days ago, I tested it with an x-ray at a pawn shop, the gold is real. I'm not sure about the rubies and diamonds. If anyone is curious about what the ring looks like, link to image gallery. I have apologized multiple times and shown them the receipt. We are both Asians, and families play a big role in our marriage. I, 26 female, kicked my soon-to-be ex-friend, 25 female, out of my house as the title says, last week I kicked, what I thought was a good friend, out of my house because I could no longer handle her antics, I just want to write it here to distress and deal with the grief of losing a friend, Kendall, 25 female, and I met in university in 2016. We studied different majors but were from the same department, so we shared many classes together and bonded over our passion for gaming and memes. Upon graduation, Kenda moved back to her hometown due to COVID and found a job there. We kept in touch online through Instagram. About three years later, Kenda told me she found a better paying job in the city, so she's planning to move out of her parents' place. When I asked her about her plans for her accommodations, she replied, that's the thing, I was going to ask if you have an extra bedroom that I could move into. For context, I inherited an apartment from my late grandfather, which was a nice three-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment near the city center last January. I currently live alone there since it is closer to my workplace and has all the conveniences of public transport. After some thinking, I thought that there's no harm in living with Kenda since I consider us close friends. We discussed the terms and, of course, the rent. A week later, Kenda moved into my apartment. It was great at first, my home felt more lively than usual and the thought of going home to a close friend warmed my heart, and gave me a sense of security. Things were okay for a while, and then stuff went downhill super quick. Kendall started complaining about many things at home, about her work, her savings, and how she feels homesick. At first, I was very accommodating, thinking maybe she just needed time to get used to city life. I offered as much help as I could, even to the point that if she's low on money, I don't mind voiding a month's rent if it meant I could help her achieve financial stability. I taught her how to save money, and how to live off of my then low salary, with several commitments like my car, my dog, and a student loan. I grew up where my parents expected me to be independent, so I told her things I do when I'm low on cash, like how to get freelance jobs, etc., but she always seems to have excuses for every suggestion I have. Finding a freelance job is too hard, or how she couldn't let go of her premium junk food, that she isn't willing to cook or meal prep, and I eventually decided to leave it as it is. And after two months of living together, I realized Kenda started treating me as some kind of competition. She would constantly ask me things like how much money I make a month and how many job hoppings that take place, anything that she thinks she's better than me, she'll definitely pop that question. She boasts about about how she is loyal to her Shastaris paying company and how I would never be able to move up the corporate ladder as she called me an industry frog she once snooped my savings balance and asked how the heck I had so much saved up with commitments etc mind you she didn't have a lot of commitments since her parents paid off her student loans and fully paid off a brand new car for her 
and maybe I should stop collecting rent from her. I got mad and told her if she wasn't happy living with me, maybe she should move out. Q crocodile tears as she said it was a joke. I didn't have to take her seriously. She begged for forgiveness and promised to never snoop on my personal items and details again. I let it go once, but she kept bringing things up, like, well, you have the cash and a credit card. Every time I told her I would rather stay home because I no longer have the budget to go out and have fun. Comments like these became more frequent when I got a new job six months ago. On top of that, she doesn't clean up after herself, try to flirt with my boyfriend, and at times parked in my parking space, when our initial agreement was that she has to find her own parking space if she's moving in with her own car because my apartment only has one parking lot per unit. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I caught her kicking my dog in the abdomen when I got home from work. I yelled at her and rushed to check on my dog, luckily, he was fine but I still rushed him to the vet for safety measures. I got home, and she sneered that it was just a dog, and as a friend, I shouldn't treat her like that. I asked why she'd kicked my dog, and she didn't answer me. She shrugged and tried to escape into her room. At this point, it had already been about a year since Kenda moved in with me. I lost my cool and told her off, bringing up her problems and how I tried to be nice and accommodating. Then I told her I'm giving her a week to move out, and that from then on I would rather we keep our relationship casual or we don't ever talk at all. Kenda cried and begged me to not kick her out, but soon it turned into her screaming back at me, calling me a bad friend because apparently, in her words, I didn't tell her off on how badly she was behaving, like, what the heck? There was a lot of back and forth, and I don't remember what I said, but I remember eventually calling her an entitled brat. She cried again, saying it was uncalled for, and stormed off to her room. The next day, I was bombarded with texts from other university friends, some calling me selfish and others sympathizing with me. Apparently, Kenda posted our argument on Facebook and Instagram, painting me as the bad guy. I was upset at first, but I decided that after Kenda moved out, we would no longer be friends, as would those who took her side of the story and condemned me. Last week, Kenda left, and I changed the locks on my apartment. I curled up in bed and cried myself out probably from the sadness of losing a friend, or maybe I am finally letting out all the frustrations. I am definitely still grieving about this loss of a friend, as I've had many good times with Kendall. For now, I want to focus on myself, and hopefully I will eventually get over this. Edit, the whole teasing that I have more money, than Kendall got worse when I told her I was given an offer by an MNC as a senior designer, and I disclosed to her, the offered salary, as we always did, like I know how much she earns too which was about 50% more than hers. That was dumb on my part. I now understand why my parents told me to never disclose or discuss salaries the moment I started working. Update, I kicked my soon-to-be ex-friend out of my house. For those who haven't seen the original post, you may read it here for context. Hello everyone, I'm here with some updates about me and my doggo, as well as my now ex-friend, Kendall. Let's start off with an update about myself. I've been doing well, and surprisingly, as some of you mentioned previously, I've gotten over the loss of this friendship rather quickly. My boyfriend planned a trip to a pet-friendly beachfront hotel, and I spent a few days with just my boyfriend and doggo. We played in the sea water, and I watched my dog play in the sand. Overall, we had a great time, and we even had grilled fish together while watching the sunset. Doggo had a deboned fish fillet. I am also grateful for my friends, who stood by my side regarding this issue. They check in on me, from time to time and send me funny content to watch during my free time. Some of them even told me their stories about Kenda and their discontentment with her behavior, of which I, will list some below. Friend A, Kenda ridiculed Friend A several times, because Friend A earned less than Kendall, despite working a year longer than Kendall. Friend B, Kenda trash talked Friend B's company, via Instagram just because Kenda flunked her interview with said company with flying colors. Friend C, Kenda always demands that Friend C be her personal driver during her college days. If Friend C refuses, Kenda will guilt trip her. Friend D, ruined Friend D's assignment by pranking him. She actually formatted his laptop when the project was due in two weeks. When confronted, all Kenda said was, oopses, there are many more, but these are the more icky ones I've heard from my friends. And now with that out of the way, here is today's main course. After I kicked Kendall out of my house, one of my university friends, let's call her Anne, stood by Kendall's version of events and has allowed Kenda to move in with her instead and called me out of the blue this afternoon, 
and her first question to me was, how on earth did you manage to put up with Kenda for a year? She's driving me crazy. Long story short, whatever Kenda did when she was living with me, she now does it to Anne. Snooping Anne's personal items, leaving dirty laundry around, generally being a prick in the buttocks and told me she's planning to force Kenda out of her house too. I didn't comment much since and was among those who called me a cruel person, but now it has come back to bite her. But wait, that's not all. According to Anne, Kenda lost her job because she tried to ask for a 100% increment and assaulted her supervisor when the increment request was turned down two weeks ago. She was immediately escorted out of the office building by security and she just texted me 20 minutes ago saying she needed a favor from me and that she wants a job at my workplace. I replied, stating there isn't any vacancy. To be honest, even if there is, I wouldn't hire her. So yeah, I hope this is the last time I hear from Kendall and I'll only update if somehow something interesting happens that involves Kendall, does, do not enter, mean nothing to people, so I work at a resort and employees share the same parking spaces as guests and visitors, like with any place, finding a convenient parking spot, that is close to where you are going can either be super easy or super annoying, sometimes, you are just going to have to park a 10 minute walk away because the main lot is full, sometimes you get lucky, the main lot is empty, and you can choose, wherever you want to park, that's just life, however, some people end up finding a third option, which is parking in a place they're not supposed to be in, which is our resort's dirt lot, in our town, cars are forbidden from parking on unpaved areas unless the property is given permission, and received a fine for disobeying, this included the dirt lot, which gets its name from the fact that it's made of dirt, but fines haven't stopped people from parking there, so our security department put up an iron barricade, and a do not enter sign to keep people from entering, and even still people park there, people will literally take the time to move the barricade so they can park there, last summer, one of my co-workers got into serious trouble, because he damaged the barricade by throwing it to the side, they figured out it was him because of his license plate, and a sticker with his name was on the back of the car, not only was this kid, who was 19, facing a fine for parking illegally, but also got a visit by the head of security himself who threatened him with paying for damages to company property if he did that again, it was a sight to behold, I decided to share this story now because one of the major managers of the resort sent an entire email out about employees moving the barricade so they could park on the dirt lot, seriously, why take the time to do that, is a 10 minute walk really worth the threat of a fine, and possible write ups from your workplace, edit, I thought I mentioned this and I might have deleted it by accident, but the reason parking on dirt is illegal, is due to a city ordinance, the ordinance basically prohibits cars from parking anywhere that isn't properly paved to the city's standards, there's a few exceptions though which is how we are sometimes able to park there, does, do not enter, mean nothing to people, so I work at a resort and employees share the same parking spaces as guests and visitors, like with any place, finding a convenient parking spot that is close to where you're going can either be super easy or super annoying, sometimes, you're just going to have to park a 10 minute walk away because the main lot is full, sometimes you get lucky, the main lot is empty, and you can choose, wherever you want to park, that's just life, however, some people end up finding a third option, which is parking in a place they're not supposed to be in, which is our resort's dirt lot, in our town, cars are forbidden from parking on unpaved areas unless the property is given permission, and received a fine for disobeying, this included the dirt lot, which gets its name from the fact that it's made of dirt, but fines haven't stopped people from parking there, so our security department put up an iron barricade, and a do not enter, sign to keep people from entering, and even still people park there, people will literally take the time to move the barricade so they can park there, last summer, one of my co-workers got into serious trouble, because he damaged the barricade by throwing it to the side, they figured out it was him, because of his license plate, and a sticker with his name, was on the back of the car, not only was this kid, who was 19, facing a fine for parking illegally, but also got a visit by the head of security himself who threatened him with paying for damages to company property if he did that again. It was a sight to behold. I decided to share this story now because one of the major managers of the resort sent an entire email out about employees moving the barricade so they could park on the dirt lot. Seriously, why take the time to do that? Is a 10-minute walk really worth the threat of a fine and possible 
write-ups from your workplace. Edit. I thought I mentioned this and I might have deleted it by accident, but the reason parking on dirt is illegal is due to a city ordinance. The ordinance basically prohibits cars from parking anywhere that isn't properly paved to the city's standards. There's a few exceptions though which is how we're sometimes able to park there. I think my entitled friend intentionally tried to make me feel sad that I'm alone for Valentine's Day. Both my friend and I are in relationships, I'm engaged to the love of my life but with that we have to be apart for a bit, my fiancé and I are doing the K-1 fiancé visa, so we have to be apart for a year max, but luckily the government is making it go by fast, so it most likely will be under a year, the long distance is very hard on me and us, but we're making it through. Luckily I have a lot of work vacations and I'm seeing him on Sunday for the whole week in London. And then in August I'm spending a month in his home country of South Korea. My friend is in a toxic on and off again relationship. They are honestly a match made in hell. She has told me her boyfriend was cheating on her with a lesbian. And she made these claims for a while. Regarding cheating she has said he was going to cheat on her during her birthday. With all the cheating they always seem to get back together. She goes from telling me how horrible he is to being the happiest girl alive. Since today, it's Valentine's Day, encouraged myself not to give it much thought so I won't make myself sad that my fiancé isn't here today. We facetimed, made lovely Instagram posts, and told each other how much we love each other. I planned just to have a night to myself, watch some horror movies, and have some popcorn. My friend called me and I knew right away she would start bragging about her plans. When I answered the phone she said, Hey girl I'm just checking in on you since you don't have Valentine's Day with your man and I said, Oh yeah I'm fine. I honestly don't care since I'm seeing him in a few days. Luckily, the conversation changed but she kept going into detail about Valentine's Day. I just told myself to let her have this and let her go off. But I started to feel like she was playing it up to hurt my feelings like it just felt extra. She told me that her boyfriend bought her a $300 ring. What they are doing for dinner etc. It was fine initially, but she kept repeating herself. Then she said to me that she feels sorry for me that I'm alone for Valentine's Day. That hurt to hear but I just said I really don't care. I guess I tried to push the narrative that I don't care. Then her brother walked past who's also my friend. She asked him what's his Valentine's Day plans. He said his plans are doing nothing and she went off saying that she feels bad that he's not doing anything for Valentine's Day and she couldn't imagine being alone for Valentine's Day. Her brother just kept repeating herself by telling her the holiday isn't for him, and he doesn't care about it. Funny enough a few days ago my friend was telling me that she fears her boyfriend won't do anything for Valentine's Day, since according to her, he's not telling her what type of gift he wants and then proceeded to get upset because she didn't want to buy him an Xbox. He also told her that Valentine's Day a so white person holiday and blamed white people for taking his money. I told my fiancé about this and he said that he thinks she's doing it intentionally to hurt my feelings and to make me feel upset and jealous. My fiancé has pointed out that she has done stuff like this before and he's not surprised that she would do it again. I tried so hard not to let it affect me but in a way I does. I don't know if I'm being sensitive or was this actually intentional? I went to the doctor today. A lady in the waiting room had a fussy child and asked the receptionist for a lollipop. She goes up to the counter and sees the basket full of Valentine's candy. Oh, can I have a couple chocolates the receptionist kindly holds the basket up. This lady takes a handful and more than half of the basket with her claw-like fingernails. Dozens of chocolates. Jams that into her hoodie pocket. The receptionist was just dazed at the audacity. You took a dang handful, not just a couple. The lady sits down and doesn't even say thanks. That kid is still fussy, and now baby shark lives in my brain for the rest of the day. This happened yesterday, and I cannot think about it without shaking and rage. This woman, Karen, was in front of me in a really long line. When there was room on the belt, I put my five items a foot behind her last groceries and she slammed a divider between her, like I was trying to con her, or something. Here's where the altercation went. Karen hits the $100 cash back option, and the cashier pulls out two fifties and hands them to the woman, saying, have a good day. Karen looked at the cashier like she was the stupidest person in the world. Karen, I wanted twenties. Cashier, oh, I'm sorry, 
I didn't know, but I can't open the register again. This is because Karen never asked for 20s. Karen, well, I don't want this. Asterisk throws money back at the cashier asterisk. The manager gets called over. Karen, this girl didn't ask what bills I wanted. This is ridiculous. Me, well, to be fair, you didn't specify. Karen, excuse me. Me, I said you didn't specify, and you're being insanely rude. Karen, well, she should be asked. Me, well, you don't need to talk to people like that. Karen, it's none of your business. The cashier and manager are clearly stressed out and want this psycho out of the store. So I didn't want to keep this going longer than it has to. Me, asterisk muttering under my breath, but able to be heard asterisk you're just being difficult. Not one of my proudest moments. Anyway, we had to wait another 5 minutes because the till didn't have any 20s. Probably because this isn't a bank. She ran right to the customer service line. When she got her cash, of course. I just hope she felt a little embarrassed and is scared of being called out next time. She wants to berate a service worker. I know someone might read this and think I'm just a miserable hater. But can I just vent for a second? I find it incredibly irritating how young people get online and record themselves giving life advice. It's worse when they take a short online course and claim they're a life coach. Recently, I saw a girl advertise her weekend workshop by saying, three years of therapy accomplished in three days. I'm sorry, but who do you think you are? There are people who have actually put in the time, energy, money, hard work, etc. to gain education in the field of mental health. A marketing slogan like that completely undermines those who have worked so hard. I feel some of these half-assed life coaching methods are borderline dangerous, especially to vulnerable populations. It makes me feel pessimistic for the future, seeing the whole generation so incredibly self-conscious and out of touch. Am I an asshole for thinking this? I, a male, 19 have been living with my friend's parents for almost a year now, and I pay rent for my own room. But lately, I've been getting more and more frustrated by the fact that my friend's dad is always intruding on my privacy. For starters, he wanted access to my bank account so that he could help with spending habits, to which I immediately said no because it's my money and he's not my dad. Plus, he already controls my friend's spending and I don't want that. He also really likes opening my packages for whatever reason, even though it's never anything bad, usually just collectibles or figures, I'm getting really tired of always coming home and finding my packages on my bed opened. Just yesterday, I came home from some military training and was super excited to open and set up a cyberpunk edge runner's light on my wall, only to find that it was yet again opened and completely missing the wall mounts. I asked him politely if he had opened my package, but as per usual, he lied and denied it, even though I received photos from the delivery driver, and it was clearly him. Later that night, I found the little bag of wall mounts in the trash. I don't really know what to do at this point, I just kind of felt like venting. A guest, who apparently has been a top VIP for the past 10 years, called to make a reservation. During the call, I asked a few questions to confirm some details, as I usually do. However, the guest became agitated and started yelling at me, giving me a hard time. I've had interactions with him before where I made mistakes, such as not requiring his ID for check-in. My manager stepped in to address the situation and explained that I'm still new to the role having worked at the place for just over a month. Despite this explanation, the guest remained upset and threatened to report the incident to my manager's boss whom he claims to know well. While I didn't intend any disrespect, the guest became very upset because I didn't recognize him immediately. Fortunately, my manager is also concerned about the situation and assured me that we would address any potential fallout if the corporate manager were to discuss the incident with me. Elderly neighbor behaves like a child during parking dispute. My housemate and I are in our 20s and live in a unit block with a remote controlled gate and allocated parking spaces. It's pretty common for residents and tradespeople to park in the shared driveway inside or outside the gate for short periods of time while loading or unloading large items since there's very rarely available street parking nearby, and everyone is usually pretty chill about it. My housemate and I are moving and have figured out a way to get both of our cars into the car park to load boxes and furniture so we don't have to be constantly shuffling cars. Our car spot is the one at the farthest end of the car park, next to the building. 
My car was parked there, and my housemate was parked behind me, which doesn't block the driveway or any other parking spot, only the one that belongs to me. We've spoken to the owners of the two closest parking spots about it, and they said it's totally fine because we only do it for short periods of time, and anyway, it doesn't block them from getting in or out of their spots. This morning, while we were inside getting boxes, our elderly neighbor from three spots down took offense to the fact that my housemate's car wasn't in an allocated bay. So, he decided to park across two other units's parking spaces to block us in. We came outside, finished packing, and tried to get out around his car, but there wasn't enough room, so we found out whose car it was, and my housemate went to knock on the door. First, he refused to open his door to speak to her, so my housemate, who is deaf, came to get me because she couldn't hear what he was saying with the door between them, but she could hear that he was yelling, and she wasn't comfortable. I went to talk to him, and he also yelled at me through the door and wouldn't open it to speak to me until I specifically asked if he could so we could work it out face to face. Then he initially refused to move his car and kept saying he was going to call the police and have us fined, despite the fact that he was also parked illegally. I pointed that out, and he told me it was different for him because he's an owner. His daughter or granddaughter had to come out and convince him to just move his car into his unobstructed spot so my housemate could leave. He finally came outside and started pointing at the no visitor parking signs. I apologized and told him that we do live there and that we are moving out, hence why we needed to have both cars there to pack. He refused to believe me. I have met this man several times and introduced myself by name and unit number. I say hello every time I see him around, but I guess he didn't remember my face because he was convinced we were guests and demanding to know who we were visiting and how we got through the gate. I said we used our gate remote, he kept talking over me and asking where we'd gotten a gate remote and who had given it to us. I said, the real estate, because we live here, and asked if he would like to come to our unit and see all the moving boxes inside to prove that we were who we said we were, and he just walked off. He finally got in his car and moved it into his parking spot, and my housemate left in her car and I waited for him to finish very, very slowly parking so I could apologize again and thank him for working it out. While I was waiting, his daughter or granddaughter came outside and apologized to me for his behavior. I explained why we were parked like that, and she was really nice and understanding. When he finally finished parking, I went up to him and said thank you and sorry, it won't happen again. He blew straight past me and didn't acknowledge that I was standing there speaking to him at all. It really felt like the way a little kid storms off after losing an argument, and I was pretty shocked to have a fully grown adult behave so rudely when I was being polite and thanking him, even though he was the only problem in the situation. The kicker is that my housemate's car was nowhere near his parking spot and not obstructing anything, it just wasn't in an allocated bay. His car, however, was blocking the driveway, two of the neighbor's car parking spots, and at least four cars, but since he's an owner and we're just lowly renters, he fully believed we were the ones in the wrong. I 27 female had to leave my boyfriend's 29 male house so he could spend the day with his friends. How do I communicate my hurt to him? I 27 female recently visited my boyfriend 30 male for about a week which was an opportunity for us to spend time together due to the long distance during my visit. My boyfriend mentioned that he had planned a day out with his friends. I told him that I'd be fine staying at his place and working on my laptop for the day, as I had a deadline coming up in a few days. However, he started talking about the possibility of his friends coming over to his flat, where I was staying. I sensed that he didn't want me in his house by myself for the day, so I offered to work at a coffee shop. Not wanting to intrude or be in the way, he dropped me off at the closest town in the morning. 
and I spent the entire day from around 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. in cafes around town. The last cafe closed at 7 p.m. and trains were on strike. So I texted him and told him I was walking back and would be there in an hour and a half. He didn't get home until 8 p.m. when I got back. I was visibly upset, cold, and wet from the rain. He looked at me and said that next time he'd let me stay around his. I can't help feeling hurt and neglected, especially because my boyfriend has always emphasized that we should prioritize each other over. Friends in our relationship. I know I would never do the same to him. It's been weighing heavily on my mind ever since. And I don't know how to communicate this to him. Throughout the week, he also kept asking when I'd booked my ticket to go back. And I couldn't help but feel that he didn't want me there. I want to communicate to him how his actions have hurt me. But in the past, when I broached the subject of priorities, he becomes defensive and throws his kind acts back in my face, which only makes me more hesitant to open up. How do I communicate my hurt without causing conflict or making him feel attacked?